Hello again and welcome back, ghouls and goblins. Hello, good game here. Your host within this Magic the Gathering Arena Mythic Rank Deck Guide video playing in standard best of one with Naya Sacrifice. Breaking down the deck list, talking about the strategies and synergies, demonstrating this against the best decks and players in game, and finally wrapping up with our closing thoughts and deck review. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to help support the channel. Let's not waste any time and get right after it. It's a new lap record! We are with Naya Sacrifice, a aggro green, white, and red deck. Like I said, in standard best of one with a two, uh, 0.0 average supported by 24 lands in the deck and we will be accumulating plus one counters building our creatures up and then tossing them at our opponent which is going to be a lot of fun right so uh flinging with the one and only voldaren thrill seeker three mana one one back up two pay one sacrifice this creature it's going to deal damage equal to its power to any target and what is cool is the backup ability right so when this enters play it can actually give two plus one plus one counters to any creature and then if it's a creature other than itself it actually will also get um that sacrifice ability of course it doesn't put it on itself because it already has it um and this is uh absolutely phenomenal a nice way to take that reach damage to ensure that you're closing out your matches lord knows uh an aggro deck comes close often and doesn't quite get there this is going to help mitigate uh you know that end of game chance that you kind of fizzle out here right so uh again it's basically an aggro deck the naya plus one plus one counters um something that we actually focused on a little bit recently but we really went with the life gain variant uh in that video this is much more of a sacrifice build similar core we're diving in a little bit deeper here uh with some unique strategies that we were not able to because of the life gain first and foremost the uh botanical brawler for two with trample entering with two plus one plus one counters on it and whenever a creature other than the brawler gets its first plus one plus one counter for the turn the brawler is going to grab one as well it's a non-legendary it stacks they all pop off on each other it is ridiculous uh this thing can be an 8-8 eight, eight in no time fling that with the thrill seeker let's go uh much like the curian beast caller for two 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 whenever a creature uh is cast which is quite cool it's going to get a plus one plus one counter when it dies you can distribute those plus one plus one counters uh to creatures you control great so we're not losing those creatures which is really cool and uh, typically we like to put them on helena and elena the partners four mana two three first strike reach at the beginning of combat on your turn put x plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control and it gains haste where x is equal to her power that's why she's such a great magnet for all of our plus one plus one counters because she passes them on to our other creatures along with haste which is very groovy all right so other cards in the deck with the synergy also with shattered spire for two if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one will be placed on it instead. Furthermore, we can pay to tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on target artifact or creature we control at sorcery speed, so we're never running out. We have four copies of the Hopeful Initiate, one mana, one two, with training. When it attacks with a creature with greater power than itself, it's going to get a plus one plus one. We can pay three, remove two plus one plus one counters from among creatures we control to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Beautiful. The Iron Apprentice for colorless mana entering the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. And when it dies, we get to put those counters on another target creature we control. <clears throat> Helena. But it can also go on the Beast Caller. Absolutely, right? Because then it can push those uh, further on down the line. Kumano places a plus one plus one counter when we cast our next creature spell, beautiful. It also is going to deal one damage to each opponent and Planeswalker and then finally transform into a 2-2 with haste that would exile things if we deal damage to them and they die. All right. Uh, Questing Druid also collecting plus one, plus one counters whenever you cast a white or red spell within our deck. Uh, of course, it starts as a 1-1, one, one, but it does have the adventure uh, allowing us to exile the top two and play them to the end of our next end step, which is pretty good to uh, you know generate some value in the deck if we are finding ourselves uh, with a suboptimal or empty hand. We can also, uh, if we need, cycle the Spire to make sure that we have the correct card in hand. Angel Fire Ignition for three at Sorcery, putting two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It's also going to gain Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste until the end of turn, recasting it from our grave from Flashback for four big ones. And the Siege Veteran for three is a 2-2. Two, two. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control. And whenever a non-token soldier we control dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. No soldiers in the deck, so you don't need to worry about it. However, it is a non-legendary that can stack and trigger off of itself. 
With that being said, uh, that is the deck in its entirety. There's a little bit of protection with Tyvar Stan, one mana plus X, instant speed, gaining plus X plus X until the end of turn, as well as Hexproof and Indestructible. We can use it both defensively as well as offensively, pushing up Helena so she can push on that value like we've previously talked about. The Thicket, the Forge, and the Gorge here for our consistency within our mana base, and who endures Defiance and Empire here for a little bit of additional value within our utility lands. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, become a YouTube member, join that community Discord, but most importantly, just kick back, relax, and have an absolute magical day. Thank you all so much. Let's go! Uh, I'm going to let our opponent go first. Graciously, hello and good game. Beast Caller on two, Thrill on three, Helena on four. This is a perfect curve. What could go wrong? Right? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Just flawless removal. Liliana. Turn two, underdog. Turn three, Liliana. Okay. We are left with a little bit of leeway, at least. That's too bad. Do they not know how to play this deck? You have to play Liliana on turn three. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep, 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 yep. No attacks. Defending. They have an arc fiend. Oh my gosh. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. Let's just continue. We're going to push up etching. So it pushes up the brawler one more time. No attack. Remove your counter, sir. Virus Beetle! Can I eat this to kill? Maybe I just use this. Well, why would I need the land anyways? Trample attack? I mean, it's pretty good. It's a hard decision. Oh! <laughs> I mean, this one's a little easier. <laughs> That's a big hit. Down to 11. I wish we had the land. Should we just kill... I think I will. I'm gonna push it on the beast caller, kill the beast caller, kill the arc fiend, and then all of these counters are gonna go to your boy. I'm gonna put one over here. Yes. And then it's double counter on the brawler because we can put it on two different creatures. Elena goes over here. Another one for the brawler. I'm coming over! Bang. Bang. It's a, a trample attack, so sometimes you might want to leave it. I'm down to nine as well. Who knows? Bingo, bango, bongo, tongo? What's after bongo? I feel like it should be another B. Great game. <laughs> Keeping seven land looks pretty chill. Turn one and two is here. And we are met with a nice hello good game. And to you too, my friend. Looking forward to it. One, two, three, looking good. Let's see if we can curve to four. Oh, yeah, maybe. Could be counter magic. It could also be removal. 
So you're one of those, huh? That's okay. I don't mind. If you remove every single thing I play, I think it'll be fun. Let's see it. Just removal. Yeah. Great. It's great. Man, I cannot find that land. Let's smash Wandering Emperor. You sly dog. Run away. You'll be safer. Right? This is a very good response to the Emperor. Just straight up deals with it. It's pretty good. Hold up the stand. Bro, you gotta stop it. Come on. Like, you can't always just have every card. Like, what do you mean? I'm a control player. My deck was built this way. We're just the creature deck prey. You know, little... I don't even have the bunny corn here. I was gonna say little bunny. <laughs> okay. It be counterspell. You know, we've got a second copy here, which is always quite nice. A secondary Wandering Emperor? You would, wouldn't you? Wowzers. This has just been a flaw. Like, what is that, a memory deluge? <gasps> In before sunfall, yeah, yeah. Apprentice is a go. Angel fire, Helena. Can I get a trample? We're going for it, homie. First strike accompanies us alongside indestructible. I'm never done for good. Hit for six. Drawing a card. Oh, I really, oh, I honestly thought that might be a sunfall. <laughs> Not like this. Again on Helena. Helena now pushes up our apprentice. We out here, homie. It, the razor cannot block. Big damage. Let's get this out sooner than later so it can become a creature. Down to five. We're all out of trample. Oh! Okay, nice top deck. This attacks. Lots of life, lots of life. We don't care. The counter on it is very good. We can't give ourselves haste, unfortunately. But it looks like we don't need to. They're going to call it game there. Woof. They were slamming us with removal. We got pretty lucky. 
We might mulligan this for better land. Here we go. Keep six. Angel can go. Our first three lands are also a go. Oh, no. The enchantment deck on the play? Ay ay ay. Okay, at least it wasn't a naturalist into ossification. As it so often is. No blocks. Alright, we do have protection. That's important. And I guess we'll try and race. I don't know if it'll work, but we have a pretty good deck. Don't shoot there. Calyx. Visitor. Their only green mana. Oh, that's good. Get cheeked out, homie. You think you're going to win this race, HGG, did you say? Oh, wow. I mean... Wow. Nice land. We're not defending. It's going to be okay. A generous visitor uh, pushing up the Kami. Oh my gosh. Right? There's more? Wow, down to one. Plus four. We have four, uh, seven, eleven. Even if we defend, they're still hitting for so much. Good game. Going first. Let's keep seven. It's fine. Don't worry about it, bro. Curving to four, maybe. Looks like a control deck. We are exposed here. Next turn, we do have protection unless we find a beautiful, beautiful three drop. Hey, they're getting after it. We don't have any uh, here. Well, hopefully we find our fourth land. Maybe too much protection. Maybe too much. Ah, that's a good card. We're going to have to destroy that eventually. I don't understand. I mean, at least it's there for next turn. Hopefully we top deck a fifth untapped, and then we can even protect ourselves. Well, I mean, we have two of them. We can risk it, I guess. Decent hit. Down to 17. In before Sunfall and my scoop. Scoop, 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 Adelphia.
I like how they take their time to cast it. Oh, Planeswalker. Dang. They're going to take my uh, Helena, right? They don't take Helena because they're screen cheating and now I have a backup. Interesting. In what world would you not take Helena there? Honestly, answer me. Answer me, chat. There isn't a world. Sneaky. I guess we could have done it first and gotten a couple more counters, but I don't think it matters too much. Such a broken card. Frustrating. Right, simple. Either a mono red player or a sunfall player. Beautiful. Good game. Oakley Doakley then. Naya's sacrifice definitely not letting us down in the fun factor. It maybe is a little bit less competitive in the current meta than the life gain variants. It is what it is. Uh, we've been punishing Mono Red all week. I thought they'd learned their lesson. We kind of, you know, went with a little streak without any Mono Red. But they're back. You know, they're back. So, you know, maybe we're going to add some life gain to the deck. Uh, I really liked the addition of the Thrill Seeker kind of trying to focus on that sacrifice effect more. And it did work really, really well with the Beast Caller uh, as well, because we can, uh, not only the Beast Caller, but the Apprentice as well, and really everything with the Ozolith, um, just to put those counters, remove and you know place them elsewhere too, right? So uh, pretty cool. We like the deck. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, probably we might want a little life gain, you know? That's not too hard though. We could definitely do that. Uh, keep this version if we like it and we could maybe add like the the boon bringer uh, i'm a big fan of this the backup ability with the life gain there is quite cool so let me know what you guys all think in the comments below really appreciate the feedback it is always uh great to hear from you you can also like and subscribe and if you haven't already done so join that community discord uh, but most importantly you know the deal have an absolute magical day thank you so much and we'll see you soon in the next